7 to 11, the Bible says, And so it was, after the Lord had spoken these words to Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is aroused against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. Now therefore, take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. I will accept him, lest I deal with you according to your folly, because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuahite, and Zophar the Namatite, went and did as the Lord commanded them, for the Lord had accepted Job. Verse 10 says, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he had prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers and all his sisters and all those who had been his acquaintances before came to him and ate food with him in his house, and they were consoled and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought before him. Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. If you read up to verse 17, the Bible says, So Job died old and full of days after living 140 years. I want to encourage someone this morning. I want to speak to someone this morning on the subject that I've entitled, Forgiveness is a key to moving forward. You may be in church this morning. Maybe if you see someone walk in, you walk out the other way. You may be in church this morning. If you see this person coming in front of you, you turn and go the other way. And somebody could be in the church this morning. You say, maybe what my sister did to me, I can't get over it. What my mother did to me, I can't get over it. Or what my father said about me, I can't get over it. In my line as a pastor, I have counseled people where this child says, I've not spoken to my dad for five years. I've not spoken to my mother for 10 years. I've not spoken to my sister for 10 or 5 years or more. If you're such a one, this word is meant for you. Forgiveness is a key to moving forward. If you read the story of Job, it tells us about a man who loses everything. He loses his wealth. He loses his family, he loses his health, and he wrestles with the question, why? Why is this happening to me? Why has this taken place? Why has God allowed this to happen? So if you read the book of Job, for those that may not be familiar, it starts with a debate between God and Satan. And eventually, it culminates into the suffering of Job. When you read through the book, it moves through three cycles. The earthly debate between Job and his friends, and then it concludes with a divine diagnosis of Job's problem, where now God begins to tell Job what he's been going through. The name Job means persecution, or it means the perse persecuted one. In Aramaic, it means the repented one or one who comes back. And when you look at Job, for sure you can see that this name means what he went through. Now, what are some of the lessons you can pick from the sufferings of Job? There's the first lesson, which is sin and suffering. That suffering is universal. Though the kind of suffering differs from circumstance to circumstance. Because some suffer because of their own sin. 
Some suffer out of just suffering. Remember, Jesus was praying for a man who was blind. And as he prayed for this man, the disciples asked Jesus and said, Who sinned? His mother or his father? Or did he sin himself? But Jesus said, Neither of them. This has manifested that the glory of God may be demonstrated. But from there we learn that sometimes there is sin that causes suffering on our lives. There is sin that brings suffering on our lives. There are things that we do that bring suffering on our lives. And the second suffering that we see is common suffering. This is the suffering that affects all of us all. It's things like bad weather. It's things like earthquake. It's things like typhoons. They are common sufferings. I remember when I first came to Hobart and um, somebody welcomed me. He said, have they told you the statement that we say in Hobart? I said, no, they haven't. They said, if you don't like the weather, wait for five minutes and go after. You might like the weather. <laughs> and for sure, in my four years of being here, I have learned. But you see, sometimes when the weather is cold outside, like it is always in Hobart, it's a common suffering. Every one of us experiences the same. The third suffering is godliness and suffering. Not only are godly people affected with suffering, just as others, but godly people experience some kind of suffering due to their faith. Remember Saul before he became Paul. What was he doing? He was persecuting the Christians for their faith. He put them through tough times. He chased them around. He killed them. Why? Because they believed in God. So they suffered because of their faith. The fourth type of suffering is devastating suffering. We see that Job falls in this category. He suffers the loss of his family. He suffers the loss of his wealth. He suffers the loss of everything that he had. And on top of that, Job suffers from health. Now, in all this, I want you to see that whatever suffering we may be going through, you need comfort. And there's no other comfort that we can get more than the comfort that comes from God. God is the one who is able to give us that comfort that we need. The Bible says he is our present help in times of need. So when you need me, say, Pastor, maybe you want to call me. My phone may be off. Maybe you need to talk to me and say, look, I need to maybe call Pastor Nico. His phone may not be reachable. But it is in that moment you need to realize that God is there for you. He is there to give you the comfort that you need. The story evolves. Job's friends come and they try to comfort him. But they don't offer him the comfort that he needs until when he gets to the end and God begins to converse with him, then Job gets the comfort that he needs. So we may try to offer you comfort. Man may try to offer you comfort, but God ultimately is a comforter. This is why Jesus says, I go away, but I'm not leaving you desolate. I go away. I'm not leaving you as orphans. I am sending you the Holy Spirit, the comforter. I'm sending you the Holy Spirit, the comforter. So whatever form of suffering you may be experiencing, God is the ultimate comforter. So I want you to pick four lessons that I pick from this portion of scripture. What can we do to let forgiveness help us move forward? Four things I'll talk about, and then I'll be done. Number one, make no quick judgments on others. You know the nature of man. Man is always talking. When you dress well, they talk. You don't dress well, they'll talk. You don't do what they want to do, they'll talk. You don't do what they want you to do, they'll do what they'll talk. 
Man is always what? He's always talking. And it is our nature. We always have an opinion about something. But you know when somebody is going through suffering, make no quick judgments. Don't be quick to make a judgment. Don't be quick to condemn others. Why we are all prone to fail. If I look across a room who has never failed, we all have. So because we all have failed before, one way or another, we shouldn't be quick to make judgments on others. After the Lord allowed Satan to afflict Job, three of his friends come around him, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. They came to comfort him. However, these three assumed wrongly that Job's suffering was a result of a hidden sin. Job insisted and said he was innocent. But we see the wrong actions of Job's friends is the same way that we, we believe and we respond to others. We are insensitive in dealing with people. If somebody is going through a suffering, we pass judgment. Is this happening to them because they did this? Are they going through this because they did this? Sometimes, when somebody is going through something, the best comfort they need is your company. That's the best company they need. It's just your company. I remember talking to a pastor friend, and he was telling me this situation that was hard to handle. And even taking it in was too hard for me. He was an accomplished pastor with a very big church, but his eldest son, whatever happened, murdered the girlfriend. Now, it was all over in the newspapers, on television, in the country where he was, that his son had murdered the girlfriend. And because of that, this servant of God did not have the courage to come and stand in front and minister. So you can imagine two things were happening. He was being eaten up on one end. The congregation was suffering on the other because the pastor was not there. But he says, in that moment, I got something. And in that moment, the Lord was there for me and he used my leaders. He said, I would not go to church. But after church, my leaders would come and they would just come and sit around me. And you said, you know one thing that ministered to me most? They didn't know what to say to me. They just sat around me and we were quiet for hours on end. In the end, they prayed and then they left. But those quiet moments, they reached out to me. It is not in the many ways that they said that they comforted me, but they are presence. So if somebody is going through something, sometimes it's not in the many ways that we speak. It's just your presence. Someone may just need a shoulder they can cry on. Somebody may just need a hand they can hold and you take a walk with them. So if anyone is going through anything, don't be quick to judge. Number two, take an initiative to seek forgiveness. God speaks to the three friends of Job and he says to them, I have forgiven my servant Job, but the three of you have not spoken well about me. The three of you, the things you have been saying about me, even telling Job to say, curse me and die. These were not things you should have said to him. These are not things you should have encouraged him to do. Even his own wife was saying to Job, curse God and die. But Job's friends, even when they said these wrong things, they never sought forgiveness until God rebuked them. I want to encourage someone this morning. When you seek forgiveness, it's a sign of humility. It's a sign of humility. As a couple, sometimes we have our own misunderstandings. 
But there are times when uh, the argument is so tense that none of us wants to bow down. But it is in that moment that God speaks to me and say, go and say sorry. I walk to my wife and I say, look, I'm sorry for what I said. Or I'm sorry for what I did wrong. But more often than not, she will respond and say, I think you are not the one who was wrong. I was. But because I took the first step to be humble and said, I am sorry, it helps to bring healing. So I don't know who has hurt you. I don't know what they have done to you. I don't know who you may have hurt. But it's a sign of humility to say sorry. The other week we were looking at uh, healing and we had the healing session with uh, Pastor Steve. But do you know that some of us to keep our healing, we need to forgive certain people. Some of us to keep our healing, we need to let go of certain things. You can be healed, but if you're harboring hurt, you can be healed if you're harboring pain in your heart, the healing will not hold. So when you seek forgiveness, it's a sign of humility. You won't lose anything. Instead, you gain respect. So Job's friends, they didn't bother to ask for forgiveness until God rebuked them. But I want to encourage you this morning, whoever you may have been hurt, or whoever you think has hurt you, take the initiative and walk up to them. It doesn't matter what you've done to me. I forgive you. That is how you're going to move forward. When you read Luke chapter 11 verse 4. Verse 4 and 6. It's part of the Lord's prayer. Jesus says when you pray. And there's a line that says. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Do you know that when you read that scripture, you put a condition on your life? You say, forgive us our sins as we do what? As we forgive. Which means if you don't forgive, you'll not be forgiven. So this is why if somebody has said to you, they don't take the initiative to ask for forgiveness, walk up to them and say, I forgive you. I release you because you are practicing scripture. You are living according to the word of God. Number three, what should we do to seek forgiveness in order to move forward? Forgive those who have hurt you. It's not easy, but forgive. Job didn't find it easy, but it was the key. He didn't find it easy to forgive his three friends, but it was a key. You will not find it easy to forgive those that have hurt you, but it's a key. This is why my, the title of my message says, Forgiveness, the key to moving forward. For as long as you do not forgive, you'll be stuck at unforgiveness. For as long as you don't forgive, you'll be stuck at the same level. For as long as you don't forgive, you'll be stuck in pain. Job saw it as a key. So he needed to forgive. You won't find it easy, but it's a key to your blessings. You won't find it easy, but it's a key for you to move forward. Can I surprise you? There are times we have a pain, and there are times we have a hatred in our hearts. Because somebody, something they did, you have not forgiven them. But you know what happens sometimes? That person may not even know they did that. So here you are being eaten up. Here you are being chewed up. But the person you think hurt you, they don't actually even know they did. So you are the one who's going to remain stuck. So if you choose to forgive, it's a key to your moving forward. So it may not be easy. And the pride in man sometimes, it's not easy for us to say, I'm sorry. 
But forgiveness is a key. Forgiveness is a key. My last point. Your forgiving others will trigger your moving forward. Read verse 10 of Job and hear what the Bible says. It says, and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed. Now, the word there, pray, when he forgave. The Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed or forgave his friends for what they did. And what did the Lord do? The Bible tells us in verse 11, indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So when did this happen? It happened when Job forgave. What triggered the blessings to come into Job's life? It happened when Job forgave. Now that Job had surrendered to God and reconciled himself with friends, Job experienced restoration himself. He is broken. He is still recovering from the pain. But the Bible says he got back his possessions. He got back his livestock. And the livestock actually doubled. Job forgave and he was restored. Job forgave and he was able to move forward. Now, when you read the whole story of Job, the Bible does not talk about his brothers and his sisters. But when he had forgiven, the Bible says Job was not only restored, but his brothers and sisters also came. Came back to him, which means God restored his relationships with his family as well. But what triggered that? Forgiveness. So your forgiving others will help you to move forward. And the Bible ends by saying, Job lived 140 years, a long life. It says he died full of life. Which means at the time of his death, Job was not shaky and failing to walk. He was walking with strength. He was still full of life. A sign of restoration. So I don't know who I came to encourage this morning. Forgiveness is a key to moving forward. Where are you at? What has hurt you? What have you been going through? It doesn't matter what somebody has done to you. I came to encourage you this morning that you can choose to forgive and move forward. You can choose to forgive and trigger Blessings in your life. That's what Job did. Did he find it easy? No, he didn't. Are you going to find it easy? No, you're not. But as a child of God, you know it is the right thing I have to do. For me to move forward, I have to forgive. It doesn't matter what they have done to me. It doesn't matter what they have said about me. You have to choose to forgive. May I ask you to stand as I invite the worship team to come. So this will be between you and God. I'll help you to pray if you want to come to the front. But this is between you and God. We're going to sing the song, What Can Wash My Sins Away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Make that your personal prayer. And if you have issues with somebody or anyone and you found it hard to forgive, just walk to the front. I'll pray with you. And God shall bring healing to your heart. Thank you, Jesus.
If you can, you can just lift up your hands and begin to worship the Lord. We thank you, Father. We bless your name. We honor you today. That indeed, oh God, you desire that we may live a peaceable life. You desire that we may live at peace with all men. Right now, oh God, I bring such a one. I bring these, your children, even before you. Whatever pain, whatever hurt they may be going through, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray right now, bring healing to their hearts. I pray right now, bring deliverance to their hearts. My God and my Father, I ask, it does not matter what anyone did to them. You are the God of all comfort. In this moment, I pray. In this moment, I ask, gracious heavenly Father, release comfort unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Release deliverance unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. I break every hold of pain. I break every hold of hurt in the mighty name of Jesus. I break, oh God, that which has held them and told them they cannot forgive. But Lord, today, may they choose to forgive in the mighty name of Jesus.